We are live meeting. Let's wait for people to join in. Hmm. I see we have a couple of folks. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the session. Uh, this is Minty. We have Akarshika here, uh, who will introduce herself. She's a clinical pet nutritionist. Akarshika, over to you. Hi, all. Um, so I am a clinical pet nutritionist, and um, I have studied bath flower remedies, homeopathy, and um, biochemical salt tissues for animals, uh, cats and dogs both. I do both the companion pets, and today we're here to talk about, um, I think, uh, natural remedies for dogs and cats, right? Um, yeah. Minty is, I requested Minty to host me today, this live, because she is one of my closest friends, and she does um, fostering, medical fostering. She is a, a rescue coordinator, and she has a lot of experience with uh, cats and dogs. So we're going to have quite a discussion today. Um, we'll be talking about natural home remedies. Uh, we'll be talking about basic home care, first aid for pets, um, how you can prepare your own holistic, natural first aid kits, uh, some quick homeopathic fixes, that uh, some medicines that you can keep home handy always. Uh, then we'll talk about batch flour, uh, what is batch flour and some remedies. Then uh, in the end of the session, we'll talk about a couple of do's and don'ts um, that we can do in terms of emergencies. So to start with, let's let's talk about uh, natural home remedies. So Akashika, over to you. Uh, so I've seen a lot of you know pet parents out there, and they have um, you know emergency situations at home where the vet is closed down or uh, it's night or it's a weekend and they're not available. So uh, uh, you can always, you know, there are things you find at home and you can maybe create a natural first aid kit for your pet that you can use in emergency cases such as these. And then there are some minor issues, you know, for new parents, I've seen uh, them getting very agitated, even if it's the yeah. smallest thing happening with the, with the and dog. Panic the you get worried, they get panicked. Yeah, so um, for these people, I would say, you know, you can always... Uh, just you know start with the natural remedy uh with the natural treatment and if you see it working for you then you don't really need a wet visit uh but if it's something serious if it's something that's that's just popped up you know just please go to the wet i'm not saying don't go to the wet going to the wet is very very essential and crucial here. absolutely absolutely so uh can you talk about a few natural remedies for basic things which um, as pet parents, like someone like me who has a cat and a dog both. Mm -hmm. So as mm -hmm. a pet parent for in a, in a multi-pet household, um, what mm -hmm. are the things that we should keep handy? I would say um, uh, if when talking about homeopathy, I think you should have arnica and sulfur, you know, in your drawer all the time because um, when it comes to anything that is traumatic, anything that is uh, that has you know maybe an injury or fever, anything that's left your dog anxious, you can always use uh, arnica for that. And nuts um, vomica uh, can be in handy if your dog has a colic issue, if he's throwing up, if he's diarrhea, you can always go for nuts vomica. It works wonders. But the dosage you have to keep in mind. You need to ask your vet for the dosage, or you need to reach out to a professional who knows about homeopathy for animals before going into these things in oils i would say you could get coconut oil virgin coconut oil not the ones that you know you the cosmetic ones not those virgin coconut oil you can get tea tree oil you can get lavender oil, um, and olive oil these are you know some of the oils we use in in the daily basis when it comes to treating animals um, even for minor injuries, these can be used in peppermint oil and uh, talking about bath flower remedies. So I personally um, have three or four favorites. Like there are a lot of bath flower remedies out there that so bath flower remedies are basically just flower essences that can be used 
to uh, treat your dog and they are holistic they're natural so there's not there's no harm that can be done using these uh, especially with cats because for cats you know you can't use a lot of herbs and a lot of other essential oils for them bafla works wonderful so crab apple should be something that should be in hand uh, that should be handy that should be in your first aid kit um then there's rescue remedy and there's olive and then there is hornbeam these four uh, backflowers remedies i recommend to every and anyone who owns a pet okay so uh, does batch flower has any side effects what is batch flower batch flower is basically a flower essence like there are different plants you and uh, uh, uh you know every flower has a different kind of healing property so these are basically the essences extracted from those flowers and they can be used to treat animals especially uh when it comes to animals that are uh, having behavioral issues or that are stressed that have anxiety um these these and that you know pets that are just rehomed or they are adapting to a particular change um even for i would say uh, uh, pets that have uh, travel sickness motion okay. sickness for them also you can use these okay there are there also pets you know i have i've seen a lot of pet parents trouble because their dogs or cats are not very um, comfortable with car rides so hmm, right for and homeopathy can be used for that as well right yes yes definitely for them homeopathy and uh, bacla can be used homeopathy may you can use uh, arnica for them if if they are you know uh, uh, prone to uh, throwing up while traveling or you can give them a uh, cocius half an hour before you travel that's another homeopathic medicine um and um, ipecac you can also give so ipecac basically helps with dogs who throw up a lot when they travel or who salivate a lot okay. so these two a combination of these two can be given before you travel with your pet and excessive uh, salivation is something that we are talking about when it mm. happens due to stress mm. otherwise right. if your dog or cat is salivating please rush to a vet um okay this um, is just this is I just when you are traveling with your pet and they tend to salivate a lot because of nausea this is for only for that case correct yeah. uh so damanti is asking where are these medicines available so i think you can get them at any homeopathy store uh some homeopathy stores have them some don't i would recommend you can go online on one ng and get them if you're talking about back flower remedies now back flower remedies are just remedies they are not per se medicines if you're talking about homeopathic medication then you can get that at a homeopathic store okay um uh, so what are the basic medicines homeopathy or ingredients natural ingredients that we should always have at home i see that you mentioned arnica which is for trauma pain injury stress and right. i think arnica works well for fever also right i mean i have used arnica arnica works well for a uh, fever as well as um, i think um, in certain cases i've seen sulfur also working really well if it's low fever if it's something your dog is otherwise healthy but is having low fever then you can give sulfur but for fevers i would recommend it's always better to take a damp cloth like not a cold but just you know damp uh, uh, damp cloth uh, with like cool water um and uh, rub on the paws rub it on the paws and rub it on the ears till the fever get down that is something that you can do help getting the fever down and if the fever continues please if it's night do this if the fever continues just take your dog to a vet or if it's daytime and your vet is available without you know any further delay just take your dog to the vet and check what it is yeah okay and you were saying the most common uh, remedies right so i would say everyone should have olive oil at home virgin olive oil everybody should have coconut oil at home uh for dogs i would say pep peppermint essential oil this can help in colic issues gastric issues but for cats no for cats it can cause pneumonia in cats and uh, other than that tree tree tea tree essential oil is great for dogs for disinfecting um then grapefruit seed extract is really really great for disinfecting if your dog Uh, is suffering from poisoning you can just use that in emergency cases because it uh, drives all the toxins out of the system um yeah okay uh 
another question I'm, I'm very curious here uh, hmm. just like in humans when you're giving homeopathy you should hmm. there are some precautions to follow that don't eat 15 minutes prior to it 15 minutes after it so there's a hmm. way of taking homeopathy it does it is this the same with animals like how to administer homeopathy yes medicine? yes you should be uh, your dog should be on empty stomach and arm um, before and after uh, you know he shouldn't have any food um yeah. and uh, it so mostly we give a uh, 30 c ka potency in animals 30 c is the best yeah 30 c is the potency best potency you uh, you can go for until unless you are using tincture and uh, two three pellets a day depending on the weight of the dog three times that should suffice when when talking about homeopathy and then there are certain homeopathic uh, medications that can also be used as compresses like comfrey aata hai uh, uh homeopathy ka tincture you can use that to uh, you know kind of take uh, taking care of uh, bruising on the legs or if there is a sudden injury at night and there's bruising there's pain you can just you know add the tincture to a little water soak it in warm water and you can use that to compress the wound that helps that make that works wonder for them okay okay and even if it feel like it it's safe like we don't have to worry right? yeah yeah comfrey is it can be ingested also but with cats you have to be careful okay it can it cause cat cat uh, cats i would not recommend ingesting comfrey got it and uh, should there be gap between homeopathy medicines and batch flower if you're administering anything together or allopathic medicine flower, um batch flower two to three times a day homeopathy two to three times a day morning evening night batch flower you can uh, add you can directly drop it on the tongue three four drops or you can mix it in uh, say one fourth uh, cup of water and you can just administer it to your dog or cat got it got it uh then we have another question here um My three-month-old German Shepherd has recovered from parvo. What kind of home remedy can I give him to improve his immunity? Okay, I would say uh, you could go for a combination of um, bafla remedies here. That kind of boosts the immunity. So one is crab apple. Go for crab apple. Then go for olive. Olive will kind of strengthen your dog. and uh, then you can go for hornbeam hornbeam also you know kind of if your dog is really sick or has been through a lot it boosts the immunity so these uh, three bafla remedies you can use you can so i don't know the size of your weight of the your dog right it usually is 2 to 3 dots 3 times a day got it got it okay um can this be mixed in food or should they be giving it Alexa uh, you can you can drop it directly on the tongue of your dog or you can just add it in 1/4 cup of water and just you know give it to your dog uh, via syringe but i think adding directly to the tongue is the easiest way to do it mm, what should be the dose of arnica Arnica, see again, depending on the weight of your dog, and Arnica comes in tincture and pellet forms both. If you're giving pellets, two to three pellets three times a day. But this is depending on the emergency of the situation. If it's like something that is this, then I would say repeating the dosage every hour or so. uh but then it would the dosage would totally depend on the weight of your dog i would say for that i think you should get in touch with a vet who knows homeopathy or you can get in touch with a nutritionist who is aware about this and you can ask them the dosage also uh, it's it's important to know that this also depends on species whether you have a cat or a dog uh, yes just yeah So just be very careful when you are using okay. cats. I think they come in more than two pellets. I'm sorry. I think my dog is also trying to participate in the video. It's a hi to him, me. That's good. Hi, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, okay. Um. Uh, next. Uh. Should we talk about uh, maintenance of different conditions? With homeopathy and batch flower, like for example, I have a dog who has a hip dysplasia, so hmm. I give Monica and Costicum a lot for maintenance. So, what do you think is the role of homeopathy and batch flower for maintaining dogs or cats with medical conditions? How does homeopathy? I think I think 
uh, this is the safest and the most chemical free way out there and it does help a lot and uh, not only why just bark flower and homeopathy i would say you can even add food items to your food like say uh, dogs that are suffering from arthritis or hip dysplasia need glucosamine glycans they need chondroitin in their meals so you can add chicken feet to their meals and uh, that is because that is uh, i would say one feet is about 500 mg of chondroitin and glucosamine glycans so that is really going to help your dog so you can use uh, you know things that you get available that are available in market and that you know we all use in our daily uh, life to kind of address to these issues makes sense uh, we have a very interesting question here. My almost three years old GST has sensitive stomach. She gets mm. upset with the shoes, loose motions every mm. now and then. What should be done? Please suggest. She has what? Loose motions and? Uh, it, I think it's just loosies. Sensitive stomach. The dog mm. is three years old. And it's okay. every now and then. So it looks like it's very frequent. Okay, so I would say add, um, what is the weight? I don't know the weight. So depending on the weight, you can add, say, starting one fourth to half teaspoon of uh, ginger paste. That is really great uh, and boosts the digestive system a lot. Adding peppermint um, as the herb peppermint. If you, you, you know, you can buy peppermint online, the herb, or you can buy it in grocery stores. Just, you know, take a pinch of that and sprinkle it on the food that will help with the colic issues. Um, and uh, you can also use a course of Nux Formica for the coming month or three months. Uh, get in touch with your vet or get in touch with your nutritionist ask them how much to is to be given as per their weight and what should be the potency of it if and when she suffers from pain then um there's this uh colocynthus uh medication homeopathica you can use that when and if she's in pain and if she's vomiting after eating you can use phosphorus that is again a homeopathic treatment um you can also get chamomile tea from market and you can just, you know, give it to her after every meal, say half cup of it after every meal that suits the stomach down. And you might want to get in touch with your vet also and check what is the underlying issue that is causing this because there has to be something right that is causing this and uh, you need to get to the bottom of that. Correct. Also deworming. Um, deworming hmm. is very important. Um, I see many people, they feel that the dog or the cat doesn't need to be roaming for a year. But if your dog is going out for walks, your dog is meeting other animals, if you have multi-pet household, please contact your vet. Make sure that the de roaming is regular. And definitely, I totally agree with you. There has to be an issue for why it is repeating so much. So, exactly. get, yeah, get to a diagnosis for why... Maybe there is a school test and culture done to check you know, if there's some kind of parasite that is interesting. Like I've seen this uh, in E. coli cases a lot, you know, where uh, so E. coli is something that is already present in the intestines. But uh, if it grows, like if there's a population and if it's if it goes out of control, um, then that becomes an E. coli infection. So I would say you can get a stool culture done to check if it's that. And, uh, you know, keep uh, in uh, keep ensuring that you check her poop every day to see if there's any consistency change if there's any color change in the poop black tari poop can mean intestinal bleeding yellow poop may mean that you know she's allergic to something that she's eating correct correct it's it's very important to monitor poop in yeah. any animal that you have correct correct even tasty poop poop can actually show you the food that you're giving is suiting your pet or not or if the, your dog required dog or cat requires a diet change, or if you're changing diet too frequently, even then loose motions can happen. I think many people they keep switching brands or flavors, which also leads to loose motions. So yes, very valid points. Um, okay, going to the next question. What is the best medicine to apply on axis on rear leg joint? See, um, on so I would say ki usko you can wash it with um i would say geranium thoda sa because abscess pe geranium uh works wonders uh it's 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 an it's an essential oil you can just you know apply it over it and uh hypersium ko dilute karke you can use it for washing it 
Hypersium is a homeopathic medication. And also, please stay in touch with your vet. Just make yes, sure that, yes, that, is, that is very, very important. So these measures that we're telling you, these remedies we're telling you are for minor things or for something that has happened that's an emergency and you don't have a vet to go to right now. But in regular cases, do get in touch with a professional before starting any treatment at all. Got it. Got it. Um... What are the first aid to keep at home for emergency? I would say um, you need coconut oil, virgin coconut oil. You need olive oil. You need arnica. Um, you need aconite. Aconite works wonders for dogs who are in shock or, you know, uh, due to, even during thunderstorms, it works out wonders. You might want to have grape street fruit extract or uh, you might want to have crab apple and rescue remedy at home um olive oil obviously peppermint if it's a dog not a cat for cats i do not recommend tea tree oil and peppermint oil so yeah. for dogs you can have peppermint essential oil and chamomile mint leaves or peppermint leaves you can have in store because um they work wonders with colic issues yeah so these are the few things that you might want to have handy if you have a dog or a cat. Also, um, I would just like to add a little. I think is a goal. Psyllium. Yeah, is a goal. Psyllium husk. Yeah, definitely. Is a goal is great for dogs who get constipated. Um, so so I would say go for it. Is a goal is really great. Yeah, yeah. So I what I do is I my vet. Um, so we have a basic medication for fever, uh, hmm. both homeopathy and allopathic. And I have dosages noted from my vet when to give how much. And then I have I always have probiotics at home. Um, I never give antibiotics without checking with my vet. So basic things like probiotic, uh, a fever medication, a pain medication. Yeah. And probiotics uh, may, I think if yogurt doesn't do the job, then you can also have entero German at home. Yeah. I think. And entero German works wonders. And uh, these yeah. days, this is new sachet mm -hmm. that has started coming in the market called Diagel. Um, mm -hmm. so it's, a, it's also, I think it's, it's a very refined form of Pycelium husk and it, it also works wonders. Like I've used it a lot in the Yes, yes we were talking about just um, natural remedies I've left out of like the ones yeah. that you get at a chemist or at a medical store. Uh, but if we talk about that, then I would say even gripe water, it works wonders. Uh, if you have it at home, power gel and gripe water for colic oh. issues and digestive problems. Okay. Um, so I think we have a follow up from Jolly, uh, the dog, the GST that we were talking about with regular loose motions. Uh, she's dewormed regularly, weighs 26 kgs. The moment she's put on a gastro specific veterinary diet, she gets better. Stool hmm. tests, it clearly it looks like a gastric situation. So diet. You might good. want to continue with the uh, with the you know vet approved diet that you're going for. If you want to go for home home meals, fresh is always better. Get in touch with a nutritionist. Ask her to pull out a, a hypoallergenic or you know gastrointestinal meal chart for your dog. Fresh, understand, guys, is always better. It is preservative free. Um, but if your vet has something and if it's a good vet, experienced vet, and if he has some kind of food that, you know, he would recommend for your dog, definitely go for it. And if you think that, you know, certain kind of food is suiting you more, stick to that one because, you know, the other food might have something your dog is not tolerating. Because in most of the cases, Minty, I've seen it's allergies. Like I've seen a this dog who was on Royal Canine or I don't know some brand of food. I don't remember that had something that probably the dog was not okay with some dogs do not uh, digest corn or maize easily some dogs are allergic to it and some dogs are simply allergic to chicken so you don't know what it might be in the new food that you're uh, but it's suiting your dog so i would say stick to that hmm. makes sense obviously there's no point experimenting if something suits then um, absolutely go for it um for a two month two month puppy what is the best time interval for deworming best time interval for deworming is up uh, till three months i would say every 15 days after that 
you go for a month and then you go for every three months and then every six months so for that you need to get in touch with your vet yeah it, it also depends on the history of your puppy of your yeah, puppy also adding uh, also adding um uh, these um pumpkin seeds pumpkin seed ka dry roasted pumpkin seed dried in powder you can add you know one four teaspoon to the meals it is a natural dewormer and it's really really great for dogs always my dog uh, has some allergies like itching come hair fully fall uh, I, i think it's hair shedding and itching see uh ek to just make sure you're not bathing your dog too much i would say if you're bathing your dog just bathe them once mm-hmm. in two months or so because bathing too much can make the can rip the uh, you know coat off natural oils and it can cause dry skin and dandruff to a dog so make sure you're not doing that also uh, see if he's something allergic to maybe the that you're applying on the maybe a floor cleaner or maybe something that he's eating um if he's itching at a particular place and if there's a redness or a, or a rash or something just you know maybe try getting a, a culture done of that and check what allergy it is yeah. or else you can just apply a uh, coconut oil mixed with the tea tree oil on the affected area it does help if it doesn't then i would advise you to you know take your dog to a vet yeah definitely and um allergies yes it can be allergies but it can be a lot of other things as well it can be as small as you know just stress and as big as an underlying fungal or a bacterial infection that's growing on the floor so yes if this doesn't work please see a vet is a coconut oil and camphor mixture good for skin ailments uh camphor is it's it's okay i would say i'm not like i'm not very fond of using camphor on my own animals so it works but i think there are uh, other herbs that are less harsher and work the same i would say coconut oil and tea tree oil would be a better mix here uh, rather than and tea tree oil you can even add a few drops of lavender oil that works the same as camphor and the smell and anything else is not as harsh as camphor is so it can you know the smell can kind of irritate your dog at times so instead of that go for virgin coconut oil say 2 teaspoons of that 5 drops of tea tree oil and 5 drops of lavender essential oil and for cats i would not recommend this right for cats it's not like yeah, for safe. cats only coconut oil only coconut oil clean it with acv probably clean the area with apple cider vinegar and then add a little bit of coconut in then you know apply some coconut oil to it that's it yeah also always stay in touch with your vet uh, so that you know and let your vet know ask your vet what you're doing you know that this is what i'm trying to do and this is what i read anything that you read anything that you hear always check with your vet once so that you know if anything escalates if anything doesn't suit your dog your vet should always be you know handy on the call to uh, help you out it's always a good idea minty to even get a set of allopathic medicines uh, you know um, at your place just ask your vet to you know kind of create a first aid kit or a list for you that you can keep in handy and you can ask him for the dosage since he knows your dog i think he'll be a great person to uh, to go to this for Uh, so akashika do you, would you recommend anything specific to this weather like you know there's a weather from summer now we are transitioning to winters and then uh, it gets colder so this weather i see a lot of cough happening um it is sometimes it's cold induced and sometimes it's just kennel cough so i would say um if your dog is coughing too much at night then arsen album is is a great medication to keep up at home it's a homeopathic medication if it's a dry cough you can keep bryonia at home um again that helps with you know the kennel cough sort of dry cough it it really helps out a lot with that uh, again aconite just to so once you, the the cough has subsided just to make sure it doesn't you know recur you can give aconite for 4 5 days to your dog to just 
or, or even your cat to just ensure that it's the end of it. And then joint problems occur. I think a lot of dogs suffering from arthritis during this season suffer a lot. So yeah, for them, I would say Boswellia serrata is the best thing that you can go for. It has terpenes in it. Same thing that CBD oil has. CBD oil is used for terpenes and Boswellia has terpenes and it's it's something that's native to India and much cheaper and as a vector. So use uh, Boswellia serrata if your dog is suffering from maybe um, IBS or even arthritis. So for arthritis, this is um, an anti-inflammatory and the terpenes help with the inflammation. So it's kind of a, a great thing to go for. But uh, extract should be 65% and you should give it only after reaching out to your nutritionist or to someone who knows how to work with it. Okay. What should be the dosage of Boswellia? Boswellia, see, that depends if it's a 25 kg dog or um, I would say 800 mg of that, 65% Boswellic acid. If the smaller dog, 12 kg dog, I would say 400 mg would suffice. But then um, it also depends on the, uh, you know, uh, condition, how extreme it is. For some cases, we use a higher dosage. So it's always better to get in touch with a professional who knows what your dog is suffering from before going for it. Um, can you please tell what can be done in winters for dry skin of dogs because they itch quite a bit in winters? That's I've seen something that's, that happens a lot in monsoons as opposed to winters. Uh, winters, there's a lot of shedding um, in some breeds because some breeds tend to molt like huskies and they shed a lot during the season. So you might want to groom them uh, properly. You might want to keep them groomed. Just feed them fresh. Don't feed them anything with allergens in it. And um, overall, you know, if you find a, a specific area where they're itching more, just apply a little bit of coconut oil with tea tree oil over that area just to calm that, you know, itching down. Um, and if it still persists, you might want to check with your vet why is this itching happening? Because trust me, I have seen dogs itching a lot more in monsoons than in winters. That's just my personal experience. Would you would you recommend um, what kind of grooming would you recommend in winter? Like for example, my dogs are very messy; they get dirty mm -hmm. like a lot. And I'm a little skeptical about using dry shampoos. So what? What is your take on, you know, what is the best or we should just take them to groomers and get a blow dry and a shampoo done. But what is See, the some, dog, some animals react very badly to groomers. They have a lot of anxiety. So if you can do it at home with your dog, that is a great bonding experience. Even with your cat, cat ka to, I know most of the people would go to a groomer. They, you don't want your cat to hate you. So, um, but with dogs, I would say, um, just uh, use a Ferminator. Uh, I think it's available every, even Dogspot has it. I don't know. Um, but the online store, I think I got my Ferminator from them. So uh, you can use a Ferminator just to take off all the loose hair. Because you know the loose hair clamping onto the coat can also make it a little dry. So Ferminate your dog every day. Then um, there's a solution that I make that is boiled water with one whole lemon. Um, six crushed cloves of garlic i boil it for 15 minutes i strain it and let it cool down and after giving a bath i just pour a, a layer of it on on top of the dog so garlic really uh, the garlic in there really helps with the infections and if there's you know anything that is infesting infesting the dog and the lemon is kind of you know has a cleansing effect so i have found this very helpful for my dogs maybe you can do this you can maybe sometimes just rub a little bit of coconut oil in your hand and just rub your hand through the dog's fur but not too much of it just a few you know uh, maybe one four teaspoon of it rubbed in your hands and then just rubbing it on your dog's coat clean him daily with a wet towel instead of using a dry shampoo Got it. Uh, my 10 my lab is 10 year uh, he has sensitive skin so hmm. off let we shifted to NND food for last hmm. one month, but we are unable to understand what to give uh, him as treats. We give him a little piece of pedigree jumbo. Is that okay? Can you suggest any treats? So this is a senior I, dog. 
So I'm not saying any treat, like I would say if you're going for treats, go for natural treats, go for treats that are preservative free. I think there are a lot of brands out there like Doggy Dabbas, they have their own. I think Rashi has the, you know, those jerkies and all. You can go for those treats. Even I make preservative free treats, jerkies and everything. You can reach out to me for that. I would say whatever treat you're giving, make sure it's preservative free. Make sure it's fresh. It has, you know, no add-ins to it. So that would be a great thing to give to your dog. And just remember, so a dog has a specific caloric requirement every day. So suppose your dog requires, say, 800 calories every day. And if he's getting that from the food and then additional 80 calories or 100 calories or 200 calories he's getting from the treat, then that can make the dog obese and create a lot of health issues. So make sure that you adjust it with it, his caloric intake, whatever treats you're giving and not giving too much of it. Maybe reach out to your nutritionist for this. Yeah. And it's a senior dog, so you have to be very careful about the nutrition content that goes in. Yes, definitely. What is the combination of tea tree oil that can be used with coconut oil? Sorry. So essential tea tree oil you can buy off Amazon or any any trusted site or any trusted place that you can buy. I buy mine from, there's a website called Scentcart. Um, they are based in Lucknow and they just make their oils out in the open. I've seen them making, so I just trust them. I get from them. Um, so one table, uh, one teaspoon or two teaspoon of coconut oil, you can take and add five uh, drops of tea, tea tree essential oil per teaspoon. I'm sorry, my dog, just my animals really like to participate in whatever I'm doing. I'm jealous. <laughs> okay. Uh, the skin becomes dry in winters because the top mm -hmm. layer of the dog's skin is wear thin and skeptical to wear and tear. What is, what is, I just repeat that again, I didn't get it. I'm sorry, I also didn't get the question, one second. The, the skin becomes dry in winters because the mm -hmm. top layer of dog skin is wet, thin and skeptical to wear and tear. So maybe they're just talking about grooming only, since we already covered that. Dry skin, are you talking about dandruff? Looks like. You can use a, you can use a, whenever you bathe and use a good, you know, clinical shampoo, maybe something like Clinar, Viber Apka, something of that sort that might help with the skin allergies and issues. Hi, Ariel. Thank you for joining us on Dogspot Live. Okay. Yeah, you, you were talking about the shampoo. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I just, I told her what to do, but now I'm just, I just saw Ariel and I was like, let me say hi to her. <laughs> um, okay, please share link for the treat. Uh, so you can find the treats on, for Akashika, the one that she makes, you can find it on uh, You website. can go to my website, it's um, goforrealnutrition.com. Um, if you can just, maybe you can just type it down and you can share it on the screen. Yeah, I'll, I'll just well, maybe that. someone can comment on that below. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about do's and don'ts um, in case of emergency. So, hmm. what 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 is emergency care? To understand, like, what do you mean by emergency care? Your dog got hurt. Um, he got a sudden fracture. He fell somewhere. There's a sprain. There's a strain. Uh, there's a sudden fever and there's a wound which there's excessive bleeding. So what you do and of course uh, heat stroke, uh, then diarrhea. These could be emergency issues when you know Sundays most pets are closed and you don't know what, what to do, where to take your dog or if it's at night. So I would say in case of excessive bleeding, you can use things like uh, Arnica stems bleeding a lot. So you can use arnica to kind of control that bleeding and you can use aconite for the shock or the trauma that you know that your dog went through. If there's a burn, then you can use aloe vera gel. If you have an aloe, aloe vera plant at home, that's great. I always advise people with pets to keep aloe vera plant at home. Use aloe vera gel on it. Um, urtica can be used. Uh, it's a homeopathic medicine. It can be given for pain. Um, then... Um, what else? Insect bite is an emergency. So in case of, in, you know, insect bite, again, you can use urticaca. 
uh, tincture or uh, you can use so you can clean the wound if it's a bee sting or if it's something that's you know an insect bite just use apple cider vinegar so this is again something that you should have as an emergency you know um, medication so apple cider vinegar get raw and uh, organic apple cider vinegar clean the wound with that clean the insect bite with that and then just take a slice of onion and keep it on that don't let your dog eat that but just keep it on that that will take the sting away okay got it. Uh, is aloe vera safe for cats uh i won't say for internal consumption no but, but i have seen um, a lot of cat foods coming out with aloe vera there's been a controversy with it uh when we did the course we were told that garlic is fine for dogs aloe vera is fine for cats we even learned that you know lavender essential oil is great for cats but now we've seen contradictory studies coming in but none of them have been proven as such i know some dogs are kind of allergic to garlic but for most of them it it works wonders when there's some kind of infection or even in you know cases where there's uh, diarrhea and uh, aloe vera topically applied can be you know used for burns and all and aloe vera juice is really really great for dogs that have and cats that have diarrhea got it got it mm -hmm. please suggest shampoo for sensitive skin as of now we are using captain jack barking up the tree for itching and dry skin um barking up the tree is is also a great shampoo another one that you can use is cleanar uska there's an uh, there's there's this vibraca allergy wala shampoo i don't quite remember the name but you can just go well, google vibraca and allergy so there's one cleanar m from vibraca that's great for sensitive skin and uh, there's one this one called allergy something i don't remember the name it's from vibraca you can use that as well please explain something about home made diet which incorporates all the vital nutrients i didn't get you come again please uh, please explain something about home made diet which incorporates all the vital nutrients i think you mean a uh, well balanced home made diet see a well balanced diet is again um that depends on your dog's condition um there has to be a proper amount of high quality protein in the diet which comes from animal meat which is chicken uh, there's mutton there's uh, uh, duck duck is a hypoallergenic meat and uh, then there is uh, a fish fish has to be you know given in moderation but can be given for their efas you can add a little bit of grains if your dog is not allergic to grains you can add a little bit of vegetables veg not the vegetables from nightshade family not anything that is harmful to your dog but then there are certain vegetables like carrots pumpkins uh, green beans spinach um, broccoli zucchini cucumber that can be used in your dog's diet so but then it if it is it has all the vital nutrients that is something that your nutritionist will ensure you know because when being a nutritionist whenever i make out a meal plan i check all the nutrients in the meal i check how much calcium am i getting how much potassium am i getting how much phosphorus am i getting how much you know everything there's a list and we follow that and then we devise something that is nutritionally well balanced don't don't experiment at your place don't experiment by yourself and don't depend on google definitely yes i when i see a lot of people or uh, like many of my doctors they uh google that let's say rice is okay to give or you know some some controversial advice like that so guys mm. please it's very important that you talk to a certified pet nutritionist or to your vet very important one thing and, i would say here and i have been saying this out loud a lot please don't go for ancestral diet for your dogs and cats not not for your cats for your dogs basically don't go for the ancestral diet that is just an anecdotal science that is not a real science your dog has evolved over the years he does need grains he does need vegetables he does need meat to survive just meat 
um, not giving any grains can lead to cardiac issues. Even um, the uh, you know foundations like AFCO and uh, National Research Council states this. So please, 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 please don't follow with the fad of this anecdotal diet. Sorry, anecdotal ancestral diet that you know you've been advised to. Don't do that. My dog has developed red colored rashes. What to do? Uh, take him to a vet, get the skin culture done. For, for now, if you're at home, apply some coconut oil if you have it um, and mix with some tea tree essential oil. Even if you don't have the tea tree essential oil, just apply some coconut oil. First, clean it with ACV apple cider vinegar. Or if you don't have apple cider vinegar, you can just clean it with saline water and then apply it. Uh, the oil, uh, but take him to the vet tomorrow, get a skin culture done. Yes, very important. Um, is it advisable to give Brevecto for ticks? What? Brevecto? Yeah. Um, I have heard good things about it. I have never used it on my own dogs, but I've heard good things about it. I would say go to your vet. Your vet would be the best one to suggest what to do. I'm not a vet. I'm a clinical pet nutritionist. I've just studied homeopathy and bath flower remedies. I have no idea about allopathic medication. I mean, I do, but I, I cannot recommend them to you. Because of uh, something, remedies for ticks, something has to go inside the body, you know, like ingestible medicines. It should always be coming from vets. Never even go with recommendations of other pet parents. I'll give you an example. Um, my one dog, my vet doesn't give a vector. My vet prefers a spot on. My other two dogs, my vet prefers, prefers a brevecto. So, so you're talking about the older dog doesn't get brevecto, right? Yeah. My older, yeah. Like, so it's, my, advised, it's advised with older dogs or dogs that might have heart issues to not give brevecto. So it's always yeah. better to check with your vet. So always talk to your vet. Your vet will ask you questions related to your dog's health history. And you know, colic issues, a lot of things to consider when you're giving medicine. So talk to your vet about this. Coconut oil and ACV is good to feed dog with liver disease or not? Liver disease, coconut oil is okay, but with liver disease, you have to ensure how much calories are going inside your dog system. One tablespoon, that is around roughly 14 grams of coconut oil, has 121 calories. That is a lot of calories. So please check the caloric content and requirement. Dogs with liver issues cannot be fed very high calories. Second thing, ACV is great for liver issues, for kidney issues. Even if your dog is not suffering from anything, adding ACV to his meals or to, to, what, to the water he drinks is, is a really great idea. It is a natural diverma. It can not when I say natural diverma, I don't mean that you know don't use the store bought one, use that also. But you know, this can just this is just something that supports that. And also it can be used to clean wounds, it can be a, a natural uh, you know, um antioxidant. Some studies show that, and then if your dog you're so giving ACV. Uh, most of the dogs that have ACV don't suffer from UTIs. So these are a few things that you can do. But coconut oil, you have to see because it has a lot of calories in it. Papaya and apple can be given also boiled egg. I think they just turned to the one my lab is 2.5 years old. He eats only regular fruits. Is he getting proper nutrition? He eats what? Regular, homemade regular food. Homemade regular food. Uh, what do you mean by homemade regular food? I, I think that is, you cannot give whatever you want to your dog. You need to see, go get in touch with the nutritionist that is going, that the meal that is customized for your dog will be well-rounded nutritionally whatever you are giving you don't know what vegetables can give what nutrients 
what nutrients come from protein you don't know how many calories should come from protein how many calories should come from fats how many calories should come from carbs if you are not knowledgeable about this uh, 99% of the chances that you what you are giving is not well balanced for your dog So when you talk about well balanced, uh, what do you mean by well balanced here? See, um, Minty, every dog has a different metabolized energy requirement, right? So that metabolizable energy he should get in that one day. Out of so energy is basically the calories we're talking about here. How much calorie does this dog need? So that totally depends on the dog's age, activity level, and weight. We first calculate that and from there we then, you know, decide ki kitana calories kis cheese se aara hai. Like certain amount of calories should come from protein, certain amount of calories should come from, um, you know, carbs like grains and certain amount of calories would be coming from fats. Right. So we balance that out and then we add vegetables uh, like maybe pumpkin, like carrots that are high on folate, that are high on potassium, some that, you know, are high on maybe proteins or iron so we make sure that all the minerals and all the vitamins your dog is getting in balance and a meal is customized for him as per his energy requirement that will be a well balanced meal where everything is in the right quantity so kashika when you are designing uh, meal plans uh, do you also include homemade remedies or do you also suggest yes. natural remedies Okay. Yes. For yes. different conditions. Yeah. Both for dogs and cats. Both for dogs and cats. If there's, I obviously, um, most in most of the cases, I ask for a CBC, KFT, LFT of the animal. If he doesn't, just because the animal appears healthy doesn't mean he is. So I just to make sure take that. And then if there's any health issue, I do add the remedies. And I do add the daily cleaning tips and, you know, the natural remedies that you can make at home. Uh, we have a question. Are commercial food better or home cooked food? I can ask the same thing to you. What do you think, uh, Mohit? Are commercial food is commercial food better for you or, or something that you cook at home that's fresh? Anything with preservatives in it. Um, my so uh, kibble or dog food is something that is uh, easily available. That is the easiest way out, and just because you know it. It's easy for you. I don't think it's something that you should be giving to your dog because it has a lot of preservatives in it. It has a lot of additives in it. And then you don't know the meat source. I know a lot of big companies, I'm not going to name any, that do get their meat source from roadkills also. You should, it's always better to know what's going in your dog's plate rather than depending on somebody processing something to the extent where it's not even recognizable and then giving it to your dog. Plus, kibble um, also soaks up all the stomach fluids. So it can cause kidney issues because then there's no fluid left to go inside your dog's kidney and uh, it pulls a toll on the kidney. It can cause electrolyte imbalances. It is, I mean, there are studies that do say that, you know, indicate that it can cause cancer also. So just be sure. If you're buying, it has to be a very, very good brand. Um, hi, are there any effective natural home remedies for calluses? Uh, I would again say coconut oil would work here. I have a street dog. She's 10.5 years old. She does not eat anything except khichdi with chicken. Sometimes she loses her appetite and does not eat also. How can I make her eat something else? Um, I would say don't give her khichdi, um, especially if it has salt in it. That's going to cause a lot of issues. Um, give her uh, maybe some rice water you can add to the meal. You can add a little bit of whey water. You can add chicken. You can add vegetables. You can add, if you're adding, if you want to add grains, just add, you know, just get whole grains like 
instead of using rice use brown rice even if you're using white rice that's fine but then it should be in in the right quantity make sure you're adding more of chicken and uh, then you know more of grains there has to be a balance there uh, my 10 month old lab is losing a lot of hair for about last four months but without any bald patches wet suggest some tonics but it didn't work any suggestions uh Again, I would say go for Ferminator. Ferminate him every day. You can add grapefruit seed extract to his um, meals, 15 drops, 10 to 15 drops, depending on his weight. I think it's a lab 10 month old. You can add 15 drops. Add grapefruit seed extract, not grape seed, grapefruit seed extract to the, to the food. That will, if there are any toxins in the system, that will get rid of the toxins. So, if this is something that is caused by, you know, because most of the times it's just toxins that are causing this in the body. So that will take care of it. Also with pups, I've seen that, you know, uh, a lot of things come into picture. Like, is your pup getting enough exercise or not? It's a 10-month-old lab, very active. Um, are you giving enough exercise or not? Are you ensuring um, that he gets three to four times walking a day? Your pup is not getting stressed out or anxious. Even that can cause hair shedding. So if it's not stopping, it is also good to talk to your vet. Maybe there's some diet deficiency. Maybe there's some underlying skin issue. That you're not so if, so um, deficiency of vitamin E, white and uh, EFAs, uh, especially omega-3, P and DHA might cause this. Correct, correct. And please talk to your vet before you give any such supplementation or talk to a nutritionist. Or do not administer these supplements without talking to a professional because excessive of this can also cause problems. Right. Uh, my pup suffers from fungal infection. Is there any natural remedy? For fungal infection, um, don't feed him grains for now because it will grow on the car on the on the sugar. So don't feed him any grains for now. If you're feeding him um uh, food, feed him grain free food. This is only till he's better. Once he's better, you can feed him grains. And uh, apply coconut oil um up along with tea tree oil to the infect to the infected area and ask your vet what all can he give, you know, some topical ointment that he can uh, give for you to administer. Also, I would say hygiene. Like when my dog had fungal, I was ensuring to change her sheets twice a day, make sure that everything is washed because there's something called fomites. You know, if the dog keeps coming in contact with the bacteria or the fungus causing the infection, it will form a cycle and it will never get fixed. So make sure that you're disinfecting uh, wherever the dog sits, sleeps, touches those areas also pretty well. So that's also something that you should be looking after. Uh, Akashchika, how to contact you? My six years old lab suffering from liver problems. Want to consult with you? Please give contact detail. I think I'm tagged here. You can just go to my link and you can send me a, a message or you can go to my website, go for real nutrition.com. You can get in touch with me um, from there. Uh, my puck suffers from cold frequently. What can be done? Okay, for cold, I've already said, uh, if it's a lot of coughing at night, give arsen, albumin. Um, it's a pug, so just give two drops or two pellets uh, thrice a day uh, for four to five days. You can give, uh, again, if it is a dry cough, you can give bryonia. Um, these are the two medications that work really well with cold. Also, um, you can apply a little bit of um, this... Uh, uh, add a few drops of peppermint oil to water and you can give him steam. That also helps. And any of his pugs have problems? Yeah, they have, they have breathing issues. They have they have a brachycephalic muscle. So yeah. um, that's a breed that suffers from it. Yeah. I'm feeding dog food for my female dog and she has stopped coming into heat. Is that because of artificial feed? Is there any change where I can feed naturally? Yeah, it could be because of that or it could be, just check with your vet, it could be some kind of infection because of which the vulva hasn't yet opened. 
so and i don't know if she's coming into quarterly heat or she's because a lot of females these days are coming into quarterly heat so check that out um it could be because of the food try feeding fresh and uh, get a get a, a test done uh, see if the hormones are in place check for any thyroid or any other hormonal issues in your dog yeah you should definitely see your vet and get these tests done hmm. my cat has pancreatic disorder his amylase is high as 2365 which is almost double we live in kolkata and my cat is fed on rice and fish or chicken what should be his proper diet no pancreatic no no, no fish no fish first no fish fish is high on sulfur uh, sorry phosphorus and can cause thymine deficiency in your cat so fish fish should be given only in moderations or sometimes just as a little bit of fish just as snack don't go for a lot of fish don't give rice to your cat cats are not meant to eat rice uh, give chicken uh, you can add a little bit of pumpkin to it um amylase is high now this is i have seen this quite this this thing happening a lot in cats minty what's your take on that because i have some i have heard some vets saying that it is quite become common in cats that the, the amylase is high and uh, what about the pancreas itself is there any um, increase in size is there any inflammation that you see in the ultrasound that also you need to write down here yes ultrasound is very important in this like super important and yes i i do know that this comes this is becoming an issue these days and i think diet is a lot of responsible i have a client who has a cat with high amylase ananya you know her right she has a she has a she has a, a cat with high amylase but otherwise the cat is healthy there is no other issue apart from the amylase being high that's very strange okay yeah I think Minty, the time is up. It's already seven, and we uh, our life has extended a little. Um, I thank you all for asking so many questions. It's so always questions, yeah, yeah. Um, you can always I'll I'll join you again with another live. We can we can catch you there, and uh, whatever questions you have, you can just send it to me directly on my Insta or on my Facebook, and I can just respond to them there maybe. Yeah, maybe maybe we can just take this last one. Uh, tear stain for maybe we can cover tear stains for cats and dogs. Uh, My tear stains. Any home red remedy? Tear stains for uh, Salem had a lot of those. For her, I used um, coconut oil and ACV to clean it, and it took care of that. Just clean the area. Don't just don't drop it in the eye. Just near the eyes, not too close to the eye. First, clean it with little ACV, or you can just use plain water to clean it. Let it dry, dry it with a cloth, and then apply a little bit of coconut oil in that area. That has helped me a lot with with one of my cats who was staining near the eyes. And Tanvi, do check with your vet. It can be infection also. Uh, yeah, sometimes the tear ducts are closed, so that's also why they they kind of stain there. Yeah, even even mice cause this a lot. Uh, if your you dog can do this has, four to five times a day, Tanvi, you can do this four to five times a day. All right, I think we should end the session now. It's it's really yeah. exceeded our time quite a lot. Thank you everybody for joining. It was lovely today. And yeah. Take care and stay safe. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Thanks.